morning everyone good morning good morning good morning uh just a very early one today just got back from taking um nads and her dad to the hospital uh it's so i tell you what was really nice was just being in the car briefly with them um and being able to uh ensure that teddy got there safely so um good morning everyone uh nadia sends her love uh, and I'm just awaiting a call to go back. So he's, he's in for an MRI scan and he seemed in, uh, to, you know, given everything he's gone through, I thought he seemed in a remarkably fine fettle. We were chatting away about uh, the weather, wisteria, all that kind of stuff. The plant, not hysteria. Um, so yeah, so good morning, who's here? Donna Pearson, morning. Sharon Smallwood, Elizabeth Gordon, uh, Anna Kite, Jilly Jilly, Emmeline Farrar, Faith Goodman. Um, uh, love hugging family, but really do not like the European double cheek kissing with acquaintances. I'm, I'm not a fan of the shaking hands either. I mean, obviously one does it because one's in this world or used to do it, but I always find it such a sort of, it's just a bit of a masculine show off thing, isn't it? Um, Sharon Elston, good morning. Marcia Toms, Angela Locke. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to Claire and Ellie for your beautiful box of such sweet things ranging from uh, a mini little the roots of a of a rose tree and other sort of bulbs and corms and uh, some hydrocortisone cream as well so such a thoughtful thoughtful little package um much appreciated and many many thanks i'm, I'm just gonna i can see that we're a bit blurry i'm just gonna try flicking us over to 4g just quickly strange it's not letting me flick over to how's that is that any better uh is that any better? We might have to. We might have to go there. That's really strange. Hang on, one sec. I'm just going to take you off just for one second again. Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Oh, hopefully that's better. Sorry, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I think it was hooked into hosp hospital Wi-Fi. Still, that picture's not good, is it? Um, oh, I'm sick of tech. Sick of it. I'm thinking of leaving. With BT, I think we're thinking of leaving BT and going to Sky Broadband, but I mean, what guarantees do you have there? And then you move back, and we were, at Vir we were with Virgin. Ugh. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Good morning, guys. That's very boring. Angela Thomas, good morning. Denise Nelson Gale, how are you, my darling? Ellen, coffee number three for you. Sharon McGann, hello, hello, hello. So, as I said, as we said on the community page, uh, this is a, a, a quick coffee moaning uh, in between. Hi, Lior, um, Teddy going into hospital. For a scan and some checks. Uh, good morning, someone somewhere. And as I just said, hopefully you heard that. A big thank you to Claire and Ellie. Um, so uh, obviously the biggest news last night. I mean, we were toying with actually going live, but knew we were then going to go live with Mayor of East Town last night. It was, of course, it was a big, it was a big announcement, wasn't it, at the podium yesterday? It was a big announcement at the podium. Um, of, about hugging, how do you all feel about that? It, does that make you, does that fill you with joy or does it fill you with dread? Joy or dread? Hugging. I mean, I think a lot of people are probably already hugging. Um, and uh, yeah, so how did it leave you feeling? Dread, Angela, okay, dread, fair dues. Um, it was a weird one, Ellen says. I'm a big hugger, Hazel Melbourne, Epsington, dread. Della Nixon dread, or more dreads than, than joys, yeah. I love a hug, Helen Groves. I've already hugged my daughter and granddaughter, Ray Ray. I'm a hugger by nature, someone somewhere, bit of both. Uh, Angie Bayless Harrison Mundy, hello, a newbie. Wonderful, wonderful name. Um, welcome, welcome, Angie. Um, I just think people have, have been making their own decisions. April, I'm a hugger. Sue Smith, bit of both. Sharon Elston, dread. Morning, Emma Carter. I love a hug, but now it feels a bit scary. No one to hug. Please send me one. Everyone send Elijah a hug. Of course we can send Elijah a hug. Oh, I've hugged already, says Ellen. Sending prayers. Thank you, Jilly Jilly. That's very kind of you. Wasn't expecting it till 21st of June. Love hugs, but even so. Um, yeah, I mean, so we're clearly, we're chundering along. Although chundering is a, another word for vomiting, so we're not hopefully not vomiting along. We're, we're sort of hurtling along towards the June 21st D-Day, aren't we? Release day. And it's all looking pretty good. It's all there's all your hugs, Elijah. Um, I think it's all looking pretty, pretty good and pretty confidence inspiring. I think you know the fly in the ointment is is India. I think the WHO has declared that it's now a, a variant of concern. We just need to be 
I think we need to be super tight on that. I think we need to be really, really controlled on immigration. And I think essentially we are heading towards a bounce back to normal, which can only be good in so many different ways. It can only be good. Um, Elizabeth Gordon, so where is the Indian variant? I hope it's disappeared. I think for these moments when, when the news flow is very positive, I think everyone just feels a huge sense of relief. I think, you know, everyone feels that there's a sense of life coming back to normal. I mean, we have to be guarded, though, because it was interesting when you saw that no, I think they recorded zero deaths or something, or such a low level of deaths, that the last time it was that low was last July. And you have to remember that that was great in itself last July, but prior to July, it was awful. See what I mean? Faith Goodman, Bolton has 78% increase, I think. And I'm sure we're going to get localised issues. And Nadia was surprisingly kind of out, irate last night about this Indian variant having managed to get any kind of foothold here. I mean, I think I'm far more, it's weird because usually I'm full of doom and gloom, but I think I'm far more of the opinion that yes, it might be more transmissible, but I think... I think the uh, vaccines are going to be effective with them too. I just think we're not going to see the same overwhelming problems in the hospitals. Um, Hazel Marbon, I'm still a bit scared though. Uh, Claire Stott, hope Teddy is okay. Yes, I mean, he's, you know, we, we hope he is too. I mean, he's, his main thing is, is his mood has been hit by his physical state. So I think, you know, it's how can we pick him up and, and keep him going. Uh, Ain Lynch or Anya Lynch, morning all. If you pray, please pray for me today. Going for surgery on my kidney shortly. Good. Oh, Anya. Is I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Is it Anya? Anya or Ain or Anya? Uh, good luck and obviously sending all our prayers to you there. Going in, going in for a kidney operation. Morning, Russ Ouch. Hope you're well. Squire. Cool. Um, Paul Chambers, hey Mark, just found you on here. Hey Paul, how you doing matey? Hope you're well. Lovely Paul is a, a brilliant composer. He composed the music to a few shows we did on television many years ago. Hope you're well Paul, lovely to make contact again. Um, check out the rest of the channel. Um, yeah, uh, we use a lot of music actually on the channel. Um, so yeah, Nadia's doing well. I think Nadia, it's that thing, isn't it? Nadia's helping her dad and it's that lovely thing of being able, being able to help, isn't it? Being there and being able, to, um, being able to support and care for and look after um, and, and do what little bits you can do. And it's that thing, isn't it, of, of a loved one. When a loved one is vulnerable, you know, you want to be able to uh, help them as much as you can. So, um, so yeah, so thank you for all of that. Now, Hugging, hugging is the big one. Hugging. So who who's gonna who is gonna take advantage of who's gonna observe this and not hug until May the seventeenth, or is anyone gonna hug anyway? Are you an already hugger? Are you a holding off hugger? I mean, I, I know some of you dreading it and some of you are, are joyful about it. But are you, are you gonna observe the letter of the letter of the law? Is it? I mean, is it you know law? Gabrielle, I'm still scared of coming out of lockdown until everyone is vaccinated. I um, think it's too early, Angela. Not hugging anyone, Becky, especially with the outbreak here. I've already hugged my mum, Melanie. I'm still going to hold off hugging Martin Smith. I've already hugged, to be honest, but only my family, Helen. I think we'll forgive you that. I won't hug, but people will probably want to hug me and it makes you feel obliged. Um, Claire Yardley, can't wait to hug my dad. He turned 87. Um, Emma Carter, you've, I've told my son to come and hug me on the 17th. Is that an instruction? Have you booked it in? Hope you have. Oh, Mark, to have a hug. Can't wait. Katie Fenton. Uh, Laura Byrne, I suffer with depression and I've hugged my sister secretly. Oh, bless you. It's not so secret now, is it? Um, I'm waiting for the 17th, April. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I think I shared with this. It was a big moment when we could hug Nanny Di. Do you remember? After the first, I think it was after the first bubble thing and she was allowed to be in our bubble it was a very emotional moment um now was anyone else following this this story of the whale was anyone else following the story of the whale i think this morning covered it a young minky whale which uh had been rescued from richmond lock and weir before then swimming upstream towards teddington um sadly it was euthanized yesterday after it became very distressed I think what happens for these animals, it's like a kind of uh, sonar insanity kicks in. Because of course they see and they, and they hear and they comprehend, don't they, with their sonar. And so they're bouncing sonar off things. And I think what will have ended up happening to the poor creature, in its stress, it will have been 
sort of creating a sonar feedback scenario in its head and in its heart. So when we talk about distress, I don't think we're talking about us being a bit distressed because we're a little bit lost or can't get out of a sort of, you know, a tight spot. I think you're talking about an insane amount of overwhelming sonar shit going on there. So, um, so yeah, the whale will be taken away by experts from the UK Cetacean Strandings Investigation Programme. This happens a few times. Do you remember, I mean, there's been a few. Is there a sperm whale that got trapped in the estuary into the Thames? Um, oh, no, poor whale, look, Brendan McGee. Uh, they get stuck on our beaches in New Zealand, too. I think they struggle, don't they? There's something to do with their orientation. They don't know how to, but it always captures, it really captures, certainly in London, the few times it's happened in London, uh, it really captures the imagination of, of, well, any, any animal lover, but also Londoners too. Uh, medics used inflatable pontoons to prevent the animal from slipping back into the river, which allowed the veterinary team from the Zoological Society to further assess the animal and end its suffering. Uh, rescuers had previously said it was unlikely for it to get back to sea. They are intriguing creatures, aren't they, Angela? They really are. Me and Kiki were talking about this whilst we were walking yesterday. And... Um, has anyone else ever thought, we were talking about this, that when you look at the eye of a whale, of a great big whale, doesn't that eye look slightly like it's saying, what the hell am I doing here? What the hell am I doing here? Like it's on an enormous thing and it's just like, hang on, I've just wandered onto this huge creature. When you think about what a whale is, how long they've been around, how old some of them are, how big they are, you can, for me, whales really give you an insight into prehistoric planet, don't they, you? I mean, I quite like the fact that at the Natural History Museum, they removed what was, well, you, you know, the Diplodocus skeleton. That wasn't actually a Diplodocus skeleton. It was a reconstruction of a Diplodocus skeleton. Um, they, they've replaced it with a great, the, the, the skeleton of a great whale. I think that's kind of far more meaningful in a way. They are mystical, as are octopus or octopi or octopus. No octopus. Um, yeah, so I like a whale. Um, I like whale music. But it's like Kiki said, if you were out at sea and you heard a whale, you'd shit yourself, wouldn't you? I mean, you really would. However nice they are, if a whale came swimming towards you for a minute, you wouldn't be thinking, well, it's not a shark. You'd be like, Jesus H Christ, I've got to get out of here. Of course, minky whale and such like are are farmed and, and eaten in places like Iceland and places like that. Uh, Sophie J. Matilda, I have a tattoo of a whale and people tend to ask me, what does it mean to you? And I say it means I like whales. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Watch David Attenborough programmes for beautiful shots of whales. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think, have I ever filmed, have I ever seen a whale, a real whale? No, we filmed sharks. I don't think I've ever filmed a whale. So that was a sad story. One of those stories that, that sort of generates all sorts of interest and compassion from Londoners. Must be a bit rubbery. Sharks are a bit rubbery. Yeah, they're, they're pure muscle, pure muscle. Um, now, there was a thing on LBC as I was coming back from the hospital this morning, talking about the fact that there's a cross-party governmental group uh, which is raising pressure on the government to bolster an anti-misogyny measures in, poli in the police and crime bill. Um, have watched Blackfish. It was, it was uh, astonishing uh, and, and amazing and moving, wasn't it? Uh, and in this police and crime bill, there's a cross-party uh, alliance of politicians, men and women, Harriet Harman's one of them, who want to change harassment of women from cars uh, into a criminal, into a criminal offence. Um, and I think this can only be a good thing. I, you, you, some of you may have seen my, uh, I went off on a bit, bit of a rant on the recent home time, which is, I think there's a link to it up there somewhere. Uh, I went on a bit of a rant and, you know, I, you know, a couple of people were like, you know, oh, it's a bit disturbing how you, how you were angry at women. As, I, I was just angry on behalf of my daughters and, and, and angry on behalf of women who are always named and shamed for however they want to express themselves before men are actually pulled up first. And I think harassment from cars is really good because you see it and you hear it uh, and you're aware of it with poor school kids going to school early in the day. And there's an interesting other part of this misogyny bill. You know, there's a huge problem on our public transport in London and, and I guess in other cities as well, and for sure in other parts of the world, 
where men will get off, or I don't mean get off the train, will get off on the idea of being close to a woman or rubbing against a woman or getting close to them. And it's not sufficient to be pulled up as harassment. Um, and yet at the same time, it, it is harassment, if you know what I mean. So I think it's really good that they're looking into this. And I think they're looking into, it, it, you know, I, I think it's really good that it, they're looking into ways in which the more subtle sides of misogyny, misogynistic behaviour uh, and harassment can be dealt with and um, flushed, flushed out. Because, uh, you know, Nick, Nick Ferrari was getting a bit irate and I, I got a little bit, a bit annoyed with him actually on the radio this morning because a woman was ringing in who was part of this and she was suggesting that too much stuff goes on at bus stops. And then he did that thing, which is really annoying, where he got obsessed with the, with the, the exact legality of whether... He, his point was, well, of course you can be done if you, if you grope a woman. Yes, you can. Of course you can. There are already laws there if you grope a woman and, and, and sexually assault them. But he was missing the essence of what someone was saying. And I do sometimes think that sometimes him and James O'Brien on LBC, these people, can, can miss the essence or the spirit of what someone's saying. And what the spirit of this woman was saying was, was that there are often situations where you can't overtly pull someone up for an, an exact assault, or it won't be taken seriously for sure. And yet there's still harassment at work. It might be sitting too close. It might be touching. It might be all these kind of things. Anyway, it happens on the tube all the time. It happens constantly. And um, I think this is really good. But I think harassment from a car is a very clear thing to be able to do or pull up. And I would recommend that women in the street should start filming men on their phones or smartphones when and if it happens. Because the first thing you're going to be met with from the police is, who was it? Where was it? They're going to say I didn't and you're going to say they did. So just start filming it. So when it happens, just start filming it. It's usually, you know, in cars, at traffic lights and stuff like that. And it's usually from men who are old enough to know better um, and towards girls that would it would be illegal if half of what they were saying they were to actually do. And I think if you're suggesting illegal behaviour as a man from a car, you should be done for it. It's as simple as that. It's a little bit like the CCTV argument. I mean, I know a lot of people get worried about their civil rights. If you're not doing something that's illegal, what are you worried about? You know, if you don't harass people from cars, what's there not to like about this? What, 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 you know, where is the shadow of doubt? Where is the, where is the grey area? Good ship lollipop. Mo mobile phones have put a huge stop to perverts on the trains in Japan. That's it. Film it. And if you're on a train with other people, and I think this is for men who are themselves not perverts or trying to do this, if you see something happening, more often than not, film it. For, it sounds awful. Film it. Because often the problem potentially on a train is something's happening and the woman doesn't even know. Film it, then intervene. Because then you've got evidence. I just want to put a stop to it. I just think it's absolutely unforgivable and outrageous. But as I say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat my rant because I went on one. But as a parent to four daughters, all of whom, all of whom, we've done confessions of a modern parent about it, have encountered all sorts of absolutely reprehensible behaviour by men of all ages. I think this is great. I think this is just a great thing. Film it, but be careful as it can provoke. Film when you see it happening to others. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, there's always, the, there's always the worry or the danger of that. But you know what? Sometimes I think we're going to have to just, you know, what I, I just, you know, it's like routinely for a lot of black people in America, if they're pulled by the police, they go live onto social media. And I understand why. I understand why. Just do it. So I think this is really, I think this is really good news about this uh, misogyny law. Um, Yeah, it says here, I mean, Harriet Harman says, it makes absolutely no sense that curb crawling is an offence if its aim is to solicit prostitution, but curb crawling a schoolgirl to shout sexualised abuse at her is not. If you can implement um, a criminalisation of any activity like curb crawling, surely you can implement it for verbal or sexual harassment from the car. And it's not, you know, having heard some of the things that have been said, it's not just what's said. It's also the manner in which it's said, and it's also accompanied often with threats or suggestions of potential behaviour towards those those young girls. So there you go. I think that you know that's one of those that's one of those news stories where I just once again felt 
Nick Ferrari was diminishing an important story because I actually felt he was trying, He in, at the back of his mind, he was wanting to not alienate a huge swathe of his audience, which is probably men who drive cars who who actually partake in this and wolf whistle. I'm sure he probably have the opinion that a wolf whistle isn't a problem, but actually, where does a wolf whistle start and where does, you know, abuse, abuse end? Um, Laura S, good question. Is, is uh, on your mark, get set, cook happening? We'll have to come back to you on that, only because we are sort of, it's a, it's a fluid beast in terms of where Teddy's at and where Nadia's at in terms of, uh, yeah. Um, buffering, did you say? Are we buffering? Let's have a look. Uh, Sharona, I'm not entirely sure if we have received your cards. We've received so many lovely, lovely things from you, but I'm getting a little bit confused as to which and what, when and, and how. Um, we've received some beautiful cards to Teddy. Sometimes we got a generic card from the subs, which was so sweet, and we gave it to him, but I don't know who that's from, so we may have thanked the wrong person. But where we do know, we will thank, but we won't always thank because we don't want to. We have this sad indictment of our ages where if someone sends a nice thing and we say thank you to them they get identified then they get some hassle it's just it's just it's just outrageous but that will come to an end soon because that sort of behavior is being targeted which is really good um so yeah so that that, that criminalizing harassment from cars hugging being allowed um other news is that they are gonna what do you think about them not them stopping uh masks in secondary schools i think that's got to be i think that's got to be a good thing isn't it it's got to be a good thing, the removal of masks. I mean, I was listening to a teacher talking on the radio and she was saying, uh, she was talking about the fact that it's very hard to actually teach a class with masks on. Really hard. Sorry, I was just listening to if that was Tim. Tim Tim, our postman. Um, yeah, so I think that's good news. I th I, there's there's a new story breaking that nine nine have been nine dead in shooting at Russian school, which isn't which isn't good. Um, that's just that's just news that's breaking. So I've got nothing more to say about that. Um, obviously, the Brits are happening tonight. Stars descending in person. We did mention this the other day. Four thousand strong live audience. I think once again, you know, these cautious steps in the right direction. I think we have to remember us older folks are probably thinking. What's all the fuss? But for younger people, even younger people for whom the Brits are a bit boring and a little bit like the Eurovision Song Contest, um, I think that, uh, you know, what's to be taken from this uh, is, is, is the hope that life will come back to normal and gigs and festivals and going out and all this kind of stuff would, will be starting again. Um, uh, Sharona, no, I sent a group of cards in one envelope about a month ago to you. We did, we did thank you. We did thank you for some cards. Absolutely. I think we did, we did, we absolutely did, yes. I think we, yeah, we absolutely did, Sharona. Yeah, we, we loved them. We loved them. We really did, yeah. And I'm pretty certain, we do, we do, where well, we recognise them, we do, I think we did say, we did say, thank you, but thank you so much. Yeah, yet again, very, very sweet. We love, we, you know, love your messages. They're really, really kind. Um, so yes, thank you. Um, WHO, as, as I just said, says that the Indian COVID variant is of global concern. Okay, I always feel the WHO are about six months behind the news flow, don't you think? Um, I really do. If anyone, obviously it's Mental Health Awareness Week, if, any, if anyone missed yesterday's chat, it was a chat about, men, about that topic. Um, and I think there were some useful thoughts in there, useful ideas from you guys. And uh, so do, so do head over to that. I see Stuart G, you were struggling with your anxiety. Um, yeah, I think it's good to get rid of masks from secondary schools. I, think, I, I genuinely think this is a good thing. I know a lot of people are worried that things are moving too fast, but I think we are moving, I think we're moving in a steady and, measure, um, and measured way towards, towards normality. And, I, and I, I, I do applaud actually Boris Johnson for not being rushed into trying to do it sooner. I mean, I know there's a lot of people um, suggesting suggesting that it could happen quicker. Uh, Russ, the tri the trip the trouble with the film is it's currently in at numerous festivals. It can't be exhibited online. So if there are any viewings of it, they will have to be in physical person in a in a sort of theatrical situation. We are looking into the possibility of a, a screening or screening rooms or something. But I can't upload it, and I can't share the link to it at the moment. But um, but you will be hearing more about it as it as it starts to push around 
hopefully the festival circuit now. It's, uh, it's frustrating. I mean, obviously, a few people have seen it now and they <gasps> have to say they like it a lot, which is, which is really nice. And uh, I'm so proud of Oscar and Kush, the two actors in it, who, well, they just, they just blow me away, actually. Blow me away. Um, but yeah, Russ, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll connect with you on that, maybe on Instagram as well. Um, a lot of, has anyone else noticed the story around the Golden Globes? A lot of people handing their Golden Globes back. A lot of people handing their Golden Globes back because they're frustrated with the organising group that's that's a bit out of touch in terms of, you know, uh, you know its approach to sexism and uh, prejudice in, in, in the industry. It's interesting, though. Tom Cruise has returned his three Golden Globes. Yeah, he, one for Jerry Maguire, born on the 4th of July. He's sent them all back. So, and Scarlett Johansson's gone a bit, you know, pushed back on it. I mean, I... I, I I'm trying to I'm trying to understand what the the scale of the problem is. I, I, I've heard Harvey Weinstein's name sort of mentioned. I can't actually, with any clarity, get to the bottom of it. If anyone else can, that would be good. I think I think it's about the fact that they haven't sort of, in the way that the Academy Awards have, they haven't revised their approach or attitude to diversity and inclusivity. So I think that might be part of it. Um, so yeah, guys, look, um, as I say, stay across the, um, stay across the community tab. Um, we are oh, sadly 11 dead in shooting at Russian school now. That's obviously a new story that's gonna break and develop across the day. Um, share your thoughts, always share your thoughts. Keep sharing your thoughts underneath this film. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy our little chats. Nadia will, of course, be around tomorrow. Hopefully there might be a cook along later today. There will be content landing on the channel, but I am, I am due to head off and, and pick them up again from the hospital. Um, and uh, as I say, thank you so much for all of your concerns, all of your cards that have come through that we've identified. Claire and Ellie, thank you today for your lovely box. Uh, Sharona, thank you for your cards in the past. Thank you for the collective card from all of you subs. Um, it's really appreciated. We try to, we do try to, to thank everyone as much as we can uh, where we can identify them. Uh, there's obviously a huge lag between things that get to us because of the PO box thing and when you send them. So that could account for things. I think they come in sort of, they come in gluts. Um, a load of cards went out yesterday, so hopefully those those will, those will land too. Um, so look, have a lovely day. Stay safe. Um, and yeah. Look out for yourselves and, and, and remember what we were saying yesterday. If you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling stressed, you know, just try and... The biggest thing also to do when you're feeling stressed is, or feeling anxious is usually you're creating a sort of pile-up, an emotional pile-up in your head, in your heart. You're thinking, I need to deal with this sooner, faster, da 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 da, da. And you don't need to. You don't need to. You can always stop. It's like yesterday, at one point, late afternoon, I just had to sit down and just stop for 10 minutes. I said to Nadia, I said, I've just got to stop. I said, I don't want, I, I, don't talk to me. I'm not in a mood. I'm not doing, I just need to stop and just empty my head. There we go. Faith Goodman, Bill Gates' wife, started divorce proceedings after Epstein connection. Well, let's watch that space. I'm sure the uh, Ghislaine Maxwell story is going to be rolling our way very, very, very soon. Um, sending lots of love, guys. Thank you, Matthew, Matthew Godwin. Uh, love back to you as well. Uh, I read out your comment yesterday that you left on the community tab. Um, I hope you're feeling better. Um, sending, sending love, guys. Stay safe, and we'll update you later in the day on how things are with Teddy Doo. Okay, bye.